In this definition, we're going to go ahead and walk through the operation uh, considered image sampling, wherein we we use a given image um, and create pixels based off of that image's grayscale value at a given set of locations. Um, those pixels are going to be simple circles, circle with a CNR, circle, center, normal, and radius um, to control those. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to start by, uh, in just a basic top view here, creating a square grid uh, worth of points and those points are going to act as the, the dots that we're going to sample at. To do that we're going to go to vector grid and make a square grid and, and you should be really familiar with this component by now. Um, we've created a base plane which is the XY. We want to create a cell size. Um, to do this I'm going to use a number slider. Um, go ahead and drop that in um, and we're going to set a cell size of 1 within that. Then we need to know how many in the X and the Y direction. Again, we're going to drop a number slider in. We're going to change the value so that it's only integers since we only have whole numbers worth of cells. Uh, minimum will be at least one and the upper limit let's set for 100. And for now, let's go ahead and set the actual value to be 50. We're going to copy paste that and run that into our EX and EY. There we go. So now we have a 50 by 50 using one unit um, as the spacing between there. Now to do an image sampling, the heart of the whole thing is the image sampler component and that's found underneath the parameters tab. Go to input and image sampler. And by default, it looks different than all the other components we've used. Um, this is gonna go ahead and be red. We can double click on here and we can start to set up the, pile, uh, the file path location. I'm going to go ahead and click on here and go find an image. Um, and the one I always tend to use is my good old Tom Selleck uh, image here. Now, what, a couple things we want to do is what we're going to be sampling for is the grayscale value within the image. So we can set the channel output. Um, what that means is basically the, the, the information we're going to get from this image sampler that's going to come out of the output. Um, to be the, either the RGB colors, red, green, or blue independently, the alpha channel within here, the color hue, saturation, or in this case, we're going to use the brightness. So go ahead and click on the brightness. And we want to set the X and Y domain to match our grid. So if our grid is set to 0 to 50 in the X and the Y, we want to make sure that that is set for the same here. So we want to go ahead and set up a, a domain of 0 to 50 in the X, 0 to 50 in the Y. We also want to make sure that the text turns black like this. If it turns red, it means that you don't have your domain set up properly. That might mean you don't have a space uh, between the uh, after the two um, and, or extra characters within that domain. We want to make sure it reads zero to whatever the X and Y values are. What that's going to do then is essentially say the beginning or the left side of the image is zero, the right side of the image is 50, just like our grid, left side is zero, right side is 50. And every one of these X values, say the point right here in the middle, which is 25, 25, is going to get mapped onto this uh, surface. So if I go ahead and find uh, any of these points, map their X and Y values, we're going to find that same location in this X and Y domain and return the grayscale value or the brightness of that. We go ahead and run that in there. And we need to have a set of points to test it at, and that's going to be the points from our square grid. Go ahead and wire that in. And as a result there, you'll see what we get is a whole series of numbers between the values of 0 and 1, where 0 means that there is very little brightness, and 1 means that there is a lot of brightness. Um, the values you can see here, for the most part, are, are in the kind of point 2, and if you scroll through, um, they rise all the way up to a possibility of 1 for pure black or 0 for pure white. You'll also notice that they're organized in these lists, and again, because of the way that the grid component works, each column is its own list of points. So this first list is the first column of points. The second list down here is the second column, so on and so on. And that'll play a little bit of an impact here in the future. Now we could use these as actual radiuses. Um, so we can go and draw this uh, circle CNR. So go to curve, uh, primitive, circle CNR. The center points are our grid of points. So we can run the grid of points straight into the centers. The normals are the XY plane, so we don't have to do anything there. And we can run the radiuses directly in. We start to get a little bit of an image uh, that's happening. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my square grid. But you'll notice a couple things. First issue is that they overlap. And the reason that they overlap is because the radiuses are set from 0 to 1. However, the circle size, uh, the cell size, excuse me, is only 1. We need to divide the radiuses in half so that they don't exceed 
the cell size right here. To do that, we're going to put an expression in this R input. We're going to right click, expression, and use the expression simply of x divided by 2. That'll shrink all the radiuses in half so that none of them overlap with their neighbor, like so. You can start to see an image shows up. The other image, though, the other issue we have is that the um, circles seem to be inversed in that the white ones seem to be the largest and the black ones seem to be the smallest. We want the black circles to be the largest and the whites to be the smallest. To do that, we have to inverse the values uh, that are coming out of the image sampler component. Currently, the values are 0 to 1, 0 being black or small circle, one being white or large circle. We want black to be a large circle and white to be the small circle. To do that, we're gonna use that remap component again. And so instead of saying zero is black and one is white, we're gonna remap it so that one becomes black and zero becomes white. So we go to math, domain, and remap numbers. The values are gonna come from the, the values that we're getting from the brightness. The current source domain is 0 to 1, which if we hover over it by default, that's already stored in there. The new target domain that we want, though, is going to be 1 to 0. So we're going to go ahead and construct a new domain, so math domain and construct domain. In the A input, we want a value of 1. So we go to parameters, drop in a panel tool, value of 1. So anything that was once 0 now becomes 1. And now we also want to copy that so that anything that was once 1 now becomes 0. There we go. Run that into the A, B. You'll notice we have a domain now of 1 to 0. And run that into the target, the T input. So again, what was our once our source of 0 to 1 now becomes a target of 1 to 0. Or what was once 0 becomes 1. And what was once 1 becomes 0. Those become our new radiuses. And you'll see that it inversed the circle sizes. Perfect. That's the first step to being able to create an image sampler. Now, the next thing we want to be able to do is control the resolution. Essentially, our resolution or our DPI is 1, meaning for every inch right here, every cell size inch, we get one dot. So every inch, there's one dot, so our DPI is 1. If we want to change then say, a DPI of 4, what we have to do is shrink the cell size, and if we shrink the cell size, you'll see the image actually gets cropped. Why? Because our domain is still set for 0 to 50, but the image only takes up 0 to say 25 or so. So if we shrink the cell size, we have to now increase the number of cells to maintain that relationship. So if we shrink, shrink, shrink the cell size in half, we have to double the EX and EY. If we shrink it by 4, we have to quadruple the EX, EY. So basically, if we take the cell size and we divide that by some sort of value that represents the DPI. So I'm going to put a value of 4 in here, and I'm also going to relabel this as DPI. And shrink that down nicely. There we go. Let's move some of this down a little bit. If we take that value and we divide it out, so go to math, operators, and division, and we take our, our cell size of 1, divide by 4 for the DPI, we now have a value of 0.25, meaning every cell size is 0.25. You'll see first issues that our circles overlap again because now we've shrunk the cell size. So we have to change the formula that controls the radius. But you'll also notice that we have a very small area. We need to, if we divide here, we need to multiply the EX in EY. So let's go to our multiplication. And order does not matter, so we'll put the DPI into the A and the EX into B and replace our old EX. So now we've multiplied it. So if we've divided it by 4 here, we've now multiplied to create 4 times the number of cells to maintain the overall width of, say, 50 units. I'm going to copy and paste this, replace that one, and rewire the EX and EY. Now what we want to do is label these sliders. So we're going to call this cell size. We're going to call this the uh, image width in inches and image height in inches as well. There we go. 
And you'll notice once again that our circles are overlapped because our cells now are 25, uh, 0.25 or one quarter the overall size. So instead of dividing this as a formula here, we're going to want to use the DPI in here. So we could go in here and say, all right, well, previously we divided by two. Now we're having a multi uh, DPI of four. So we have to multiply two times four to say divide by eight, commit to changes. And there we go, none of them overlap. We get a really high resolution image. But that's not very dynamic, because if we go and change our DPI, we have to go back and change that expression. So what we're gonna do is create an expression that does not reside inside the component. So we're gonna go in here and clear out this expression. And we're gonna create a new expression going into here. So we're gonna go underneath uh, our simple operators. Actually, excuse me, we'll go script and create an expression like so. Now, what we're gonna do is take the actual values, we're gonna run those into the Y input, and take our DPI and run that into the X input. Now, what we're gonna do is in double click and change this formula. Our previous formula was the radiuses, which is our Y value, so Y divided by two. That was our previous formula. Then we learned we had to also multiply that by whatever our DPI was, so we had to take two and multiply by our DPI, which is X. So two times X. And to make sure that we do this properly, let's put some parentheses so that the two times X happens first. So then we get Y over two times X. X equals four is Y over eight. X equals eight, it's Y over 16 and so on. Hit okay. And that new formula becomes our new radiuses like so. There we go. So now none of the circles overlap. And as we change our DPI to say a DPI of two, again, they all grow and touch each other. Uh, however, the resolution has dropped from four dots per inch to now only two dots per inch. If we change that to eight, we'll see a much higher resolution image. We're creating a lot more pixels, so the time takes much longer to go ahead and create. There we go. If your grasshopper screen ever disappears, just type in grasshopper and it will show back up here. Let's go ahead and change that back to just four for now because that's more than enough circles. In fact, we'll see even at a DPI of four, we have over 40,000 circles that are making up this image. We're gonna go ahead and pause there. That'll be the first uh, definition. That'll, uh, this is kind of what we covered in class. We should be able to group this a little bit, so you may want to go in here and just say, all right, let's group those components because that's kind of performing an operation. This remap and domain is all about an operation. And the last expression and circle is an operation. We can kind of group that. And you could group, I guess, those two together um, to talk about the square grid and the actual image sampler as a whole. So we'll pause there. The next thing we're going to do is instead of creating circles, we're going to create, say, fins or something along that line to create um, another different way of creating the image.